part, we are talking about suits. So uh, a deck of cards has four suits. So you can say, well, we have four outcomes, but we can reduce these four outcomes to two outcomes and say, suit that is hard and suits that are not hard. So this is a binomial experiment. And so we divide those four suits into two suits, hard suits that is hard, suits that are not hard. So we are dealing with binomial experiment. Serving 300 prisoners to see how many crimes they are convicted of. So uh, this is not a binomial experiment because they may have convicted of uh, one, two, three, or more crimes, okay? Because we are looking for two outcomes. They are they convicted of two, one, two, three, or more crimes. So this is not a binomial experiment. Asking people if they smoke, this is a binomial experiment because there are two outcomes. They either say, yes, we smoke, or they say, no, we don't. What is binomial distribution? Um, if I'm going too fast because you were supposed to have gone over this section last week, so I'm going to go over it quickly. The outcomes of a binomial experiment and the probability that goes with each outcome creates a binomial distribution. <clears throat> so I'm going to call uh, X outcome. We went through similar procedure in 5.1 and 5.2. X is outcome. The first outcome is success. Uh, this is the outcome that uh, our research is about. The outcome that our research is not about is called failure. Then we look at each probability of each outcome, probability of success and probability of failure. So this table represents a binomial distribution. Two outcomes, success and failure, then probability for each outcome. We have some notation for binomial distribution. We call probability of success P of success, which is represented by lowercase p. Then we have probability of failure, Q, we call it Q, and the Q is always equal to one minus P. The number of trials is N, the number of successes is X. Okay. So uh, we have, you have this uh, PowerPoint in the website, you can open it and uh, look at it and take some notes because I don't have enough time for you to let you write everything. Uh, what is the formula for binomial probability? If uh, in a binomial experiment, the probability of exactly X successes when we have N trial is uh, probability of X successes is equal to N factorial divided by N minus X factorial times X factorial times this fraction times P, which is probability of success raised to the power of X times Q, probability of failure raised to the power of N minus X. <clears throat> From chapter four, N factorial divided by N minus X factorial times X factorial is we call the combination of X. So probability of exact success is combination due to the power of N minus X. This formula is given to you in the formula sheet. Twenty-six percent of couples who plan to marry this year are planning destination wedding. In a random sample of 12 couples who plan to marry, find probability that exactly six couples will have a destination wedding. So uh, let's write what they have given us. 
experiment is what is the experiment do couples have destination wedding what is the answer the answer is either yes or no so we have two outcomes yes or no therefore we have a binomial experiment okay so when a starting this chapter and on all the problems that you're going to see are word problems so you have to write what they have given you and ask yourself some question before you start doing the work it's not difficult don't be scared it's not difficult so the experiment is couple having destination wedding how many outcomes or how many answer are we going to get to answer yes or no so we have binomial experiment Since we are asking you to find probability that exactly six couples have destination wedding, so success is related to our research, having destination wedding. Failure is not having a destination wedding. What is the probability of having a destination wedding? Probability of having a destination wedding is lowercase p, probability of success is 26%, point twenty six. Q is probability of failure, probability of not having a destination wedding. Q is always one minus P, one minus 0 0.26, 0 0.74. N is 12, because we are, we talk to 12 couples, okay? We talk mm -hmm. to 12 couples. Now, what are we asking to find? Uh, we are asking to find probability that exactly six couples have a des destination wedding. So we are finding probability of X equal to A, which is equal to, um, I, I since I'm giving you example, I'm going to give you value to X. So the formula is combination of N choose A times P to the power of A times Q to the power of N minus A. Okay. Uh, here A is six. Probability of X equal to six is a combination of 12 choose X times 0.26 to the power of six times 0.74 to the power of 12 minus six. So combination of 12 to 6 times 0.26 to the power of 6 times 0.74 to the power of 12 minus 6 is 6. I entered the whole thing in the calculator. Okay. Uh, I show you where the combination is. Let me explain to you where it is again. I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, wait. Um, it facilitates. Have you ever done um, okay. Who, uh, can you silent uh, your uh, endocytosis? Can you Somebody silent? has their audio on. Can you mute your audio, please? I think he did. Yes, Enia, if you have a question, yeah. you can ask us if you'd like, or you can yeah, put it in can, the chat. Uh, they can put it in the chat, their question, then Shauna will tell me. <clears throat> so, you are you are seeing my calculator, correct? Shauna? No, I'm not. You're not. You're you're not sharing not. your screen. Okay. Are you seeing that now? Now yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so you had hold on a second. Let me show. Twelve math. Probability, uh, I pick combination item number three, six, get out of the subscript times 0.26 to the power of six, uh, go out of the power times 0.74 to the power of six again. And that is uh, 0 0.0469. Okay. I show you where the combination is in before spring break. Okay. So here it is. 
Then I change this uh, a decimal to percent, 4.69%. Uh, example number five is similar to example number uh, four, but uh, I'm not going to finish this example, but I'm just going to give you N, X, P, and Q, okay? You can finish that yourself. A survey found that one out of five Americans say he or she has visited a doctor in any given month. If 10 people are selected at random, find probability that exactly three will have visited a doctor last month. So uh, our research about uh, people visiting a doctor. Uh, do people visit, visit uh, visiting a doctor in any given month? The answer is either yes or no. So we have binomial experiment. So we have binomial experiment. <clears throat> so uh, what is our, success is people visiting a doctor in any given month. Failure, they are not visiting a doctor in, getting, in any given month. What is the probability of success? is one out of five, one mm -hmm. out of five. Lowercase p is one out of five, 20%, 0. 0.20. A Q is one minus 0. 0.20, which is 0. 0.80. And N is 10. And we are finding probability of exactly three visiting a doctor. So, probability of x equal to 3, combination of 10 choose 3, 0.20 to the power of 3, 0.80 to the power of 10 minus 3. You can finish this example yourself. Any question? Not seeing anything new here, okay. Professor. Thank you. Um, mm. Sometimes do um, we have to state success and failure? Yes. Yes. You should state what success is, what failure is, and what those probabilities are. Yes. You have to tell me what is success, what is failure. Uh, even if you don't say it, you the thing is the reason that I'm writing this, because if I give you, let's say, 10 word problems, how do you know if the word problem is a binomial or not? These are the type of question you have to ask yourself, okay? You may just give me N, P, and X, N, P, X, and Q, as long as you understand this is a binomial. But as I said, if I give you 10 questions, how do you know that's not from this section, from a bunch of sections? This is the way you figure out if you have binomial or not. Uh, sometimes, uh, we have to calculate probability of uh, not exactly six people visited the doctor. Sometimes we have to f find probability of more than six or less than six people visited a doctor. You don't want to write the formula so many times because sometimes you have to write the formula maybe 20 or 30 times. So what do we do? There are shortcuts here. There are some formulas uh, that you, it is the, given to you in the calculator, you can use it, find the answer right away. Okay, you can use your calculator if you have more than one formula to write and calculate. If you are finding probability of exactly A, probability, exactly A people or A items. So if you are finding probability of X equal to A, there is a function in your calculator, which I will show you in a minute where it is. It's called binomial PDF. This is a function, F stands for a function, binomial PDF. You write binomial PDF, then you have to enter your N in the same order, N, P, and A. N, P, and A. 
I don't know if this formula is in the formula sheet or not, but if uh, it is not, you can add it to your formula sheet. But please do not write explanation, just write the formula. If you are finding probability of X less than or equal A, you use a function called binomial CDF, not PDF. PDF is in the, you just, it gives you one probability. Single. A binomial CDF is a binomial distribution, cumulative, cumulative. Add up several prob formulas. Okay, so when you have probability of X less than or equal to A, you use binomial CDF and P and A. The function binomial CDF calculate a probability starting from zero to some A value, starting from zero to A, okay? Write the note, binomial CDF adds up all the probabilities starting from zero to A. Now, if you want to find probability of X greater than or equal to B, if you start from somewhere in the middle of N and you want to go up to N, okay, you have to use complement formula. You get one minus binomial CDF of N, P, and B minus A. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, binomial CDF Always calculate probability starting from zero to A, okay? Or zero to zero to A. But if you wanna find probability larger than A, you have to find probability from zero to A minus one and find this sum and take it away from one. Okay, put the star next to second and if you want to find probability of X uh, less than or equal to A and greater than, greater than or equal to B, you use binomial CDF of N, P, and A minus binomial CDF of N, P, and B minus A. B minus one, sorry, B minus one. Again, you can add these three formulas uh, to your formula sheet. So where is... Uh, binomial CDF or PDF. I'm gonna to go to my calculator, then you can read the PowerPoint. Okay. Um, on not the first row, second or third, on the fourth row, Above the VARS key, you see distribution and it's in blue. So you, you click, oh, am I sharing a calculator? Mm, no, you're sharing things. nothing. Yeah, okay. now I see it. Okay. I see it now. So on the fourth row of your calculator, one, two, three, four, above the VARS key, you see distribution. Okay. So you click second VARS. Okay, second words, highlight the distribution on the top row, and you have to find binomial, either CDF or PDF. Okay, so where is it? You don't see it in the first page, so you have to press the down arrow key, go to the second page. Yeah, uh, so, okay, I was on number one, correct? So I press the down arrow key mm -hmm. several times. I click, no. Here it is, binomial PDF. You see binomial PDF? Mm -hmm. Then if you click uh, the down arrow key again, you see binomial CDF, okay? We're gonna use this uh, window a lot for a month or more, okay? So I'm gonna quit, uh, stop sharing. So here I explain. So binomial PDF is point distribution function only when you want to find probability of one, but uh, binomial CDF is cumulative distribution function. Binomial.
Okay, let's look at the, this example. If 30% of people in the community lose their library in one year, find these probabilities for a sample of 15 people. This is A, B, C, D, E, and F. So I basically covering the whole section in this example, okay? Mm -hmm. Using the function binomial CDF and PDF. Okay, uh, what is the experiment? Do people in the community use library in one year? Your answer, their answer is either yes or no. So we are dealing with a binomial experiment. Okay, the, what is the success here? People going to the library, because we want to find probability of people going to the library. As failure, people do not are not going to the library. That's failure. Uh, probability of success, lowercase p is 30%. Uh, probability of failure, which is q, is 1 minus p, 1 minus 0 0.30, 0 0.70. Uh, part A, question was exactly seven use the library. Uh, for this prop, for this part, you can use the formula that I gave you in the previous examples or use binomial uh, PDF. First of all, P is 0.30, Q is 0.70, N is 15. Uh, you, I'm using the formula probability of X equal to A, probability of X equal to seven, Combination of 15 to 7 times 0.30 to the power of 7 times 0.70 to the power of 8. Yeah. When you enter the whole thing in the calculator, you get 8.11%. If you're using the formula, you also can use binomial PDF. Okay. Probability of x equal to a is binomial PDF of n, p, and 7. Binomial PDF, n is 15, p is 0.30, n is 7. So let me go to the calculator and show you what's going on. And you should get the same answer as this line. So, okay, I'm going to pick up, let me quit this window, show you where it is again. Second wars gives you distribution. Under distribution, go down the list, pick binomial PDF, A. Then N, uh, sometimes uh, if you have uh, 83, you're going to get binomial PDF, then parentheses, enter N, P, and X. N here in this case was 15. Uh, P is 0.30. Uh, X was 7. Then I highlight paste, press enter twice. And I get 0 0.0811, which was the same answer as the formula. Any question? No, but somebody is suggesting that you can also do alpha and then apps B instead of scrolling, which you can also do. That's another shortcut. Alpha you what? Know. Alpha and then apps B. See, because he's using the alphabet keys, I believe. Oh, okay. Okay, um, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, let's look at B. Uh, probability at most seven use the library. Um, do you remember the two slide at the beginning of this section? At most seven means maximum seven. So you're finding a probability of X less than or equal to seven. Probability of X less than or equal to seven. Okay. So I'm using uh, the second formula that I told you you can add to your formula sheet. 
probability of x less than or equal to a is binomial CDF of n, p, and a. So probability of x less than or equal to 7 equal to binomial CDF of n, 15, uh, p, 37. So uh, this function finds probability when x is 0, when x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, use the formula eight times and add them up and give you the answer right away. So uh, you should use these functions because it saves you a lot of time. So you're going to calculate eight, use that formula eight times, add the answers, give you the answer right away. Here it is, 0.95, which is 95%. What is the probability of at least seven use the library? At least, sorry, at least five use five, the library. Right? At least five means minimum five use the library. It means five people and higher use the library. When I'm use when I'm calculating uh, probability starting in the middle of n, I have to use um, the complement formula. So I have to use this formula, probability of at least B, which is the same as probability of X bigger than or equal to B is equal to one minus binomial CDF of N, P, and B minus one. This B minus one, you are finding all the probabilities below B, then find the answer, take it away from one. Probability of X greater than or equal to Five is one minus binomial CDF of 15, point thirty five minus one, which is four. One minus binomial CTF of 15, point thirty and four. I find the answer of these. These are probability of zero people, one person, two people, three people, and four people. Use the library. Add them up, take it away from one. One minus point five one five five. Take it away from one, you get 0.4845, Question. Okay. The formula that I told you to add to your formula sheet, X, uh, all of them have uh, the, the, the last three formulas have equal sign attached to less than or bigger than signs, okay? Attach equal sign to those, like probability of X less than or equal to A, less than or equal binomial CDF of NPA. Probability of X greater than or equal to A, look, great, equal sign. One minus binomial CDF of NPB minus one. They should have equal sign with your less than sign and greater than sign. What happen if you do not have one? you have to force it to have one, like part D. What is the probability that less than 10 people use the library? Probability of X less than 10. My inequality symbol doesn't have equal sign. I want it to, must have equal sign in order for me to use binomial CDF. Less than 10 means what? Zero through nine. Mm -hmm. So here is probability of X less than or equal to nine. So I use the formula straight. This is binomial CDF of N, P, and A. Binomial CDF of 15, comma, point three comma, nine. 99.63%. Question? Okay, E, more than nine use the library. This means probability of X larger than nine. Again, I don't see any equal sign with my present sign. More than nine means 10 and higher. 10, 10 and higher. So X greater than or equal to 10. Probability of X greater than or equal to 10. So we are starting in the middle. So when you're starting in the middle, you use 
complement formula. 1 minus binomial CDF of n, p, and b minus 1. 1 minus binomial CDF of 15.3010 minus 1. Binomial CDF of 15.3 and 9. Everything before 10. I add them up, which gives me 99, a 0.9963. Then take away this answer from 1. I get 0 0.0037, which is 0.37%. Question? Okay. Not Last part. Seeing anything here? Okay. Probability of x less than or equal to ten and greater than greater than or equal to six. So basically, six people: seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have to find use the formula five times if you want to use the formula. Add them up but you can use the binomial formula. You can use this formula. Add them to your formula sheet. So, uh, probability of x less than or equal to 10 and greater than or equal to 6 is binomial CDF of 15.30 a10, I'm using this formula, a10, minus binomial CDF of 15.30, then 6 minus 1. Binomial CDF of 15.3010 minus binomial CDF of 15.3 and 5. So it gives you two numbers. By, by the way, uh, you cannot enter the you can enter the whole thing in the calculator, get the answer, but I want you to ent enter uh, binomial CDF of 15.3 and 10 individually, get 0.9993. Then Entered binomial CDF of 15.3 and 5, get 0. 0.7216, then subtract. I want to see the steps. So when you subtract these two numbers, you get 0. 0.2777, so 27.77%. So, so if you have a binomial experiment, you need n, you need x, you need probability of success lowercase p, you need probability of failure q1 minus p. And what is binomial experiment? You only have two outcomes. When you ask your question, if your answer is yes or no, you have binomial experiment. Now, if you have a binomial experiment, how, to calculate, how do you calculate mean variance and standard deviation? The mean in binomial experiments is n times p. Variance sigma square is n times p times q. Standard deviation is the square root of um, sigma square variance. You get the square root of n p q. So in a restaurant, a study found that 42% of all customers smoked. If the seating capacity of the restaurant is 80 people, find the mean variance and standard deviation of the number of smokers. About how many seats should be available for smoking customers? So do we have a binomial experiment? Yes, because the question is, do people smoke in a restaurant? They, we either say yes or no. Okay. Success, since we are finding mean variance and standard deviation of the number of smokers, uh, success is customers smoking, failure customers not smoking, uh, probability of smoking in a restaurant was 42%, P is 0. 0.42, uh, probability of failure Q is 1 minus 0. 0.42, 0. 0.58, N is 80. 
AD. We want to find the mu, sigma is square and sigma. Mu is n times p, 80 times 0.42, you get 33.6. Variance sigma square is n times p times q, 80 times 0.42 times 0.58, 19.4880. Standard deviation is square root of 19.488, 4.4145. Okay, the question was, um, how many seats uh, should be available out of those 84 customers who smoke? We have to use our mean. Mean was 33.6, I think. So you have to round up your answer. Mean was 33.6, so I'm going to round up. So there should be 34 seats available out of those 80 for the people who smoke in that restaurant. Any question about binomial uh, distributions 5.3 section? Okay. Let's look at section 6.1. So we are done completely with chapter uh, five. Um, your quiz for on Friday covers five one, five two, five three, and six one. And there is a video I put it up this morning. Um, there is a dedicated video with some homework help for these problems. So you'll have a chance to review this again after that. Okay. Normal distribution. Okay. This chapter and several chapter after that deals with continuous variable. Many continuous variables have infinitely many values. Do you remember continuous variables or variables that to find their values, you have to use measuring devices. So they have infinitely many values. And if you draw those values, the graph is approximately a bell shape. Okay, so many continuous variables have infinitely many values and have distribution that are bell-shaped and are called approximately normally distributed variable. Theoretically, we call them normal curve. The graph, we call them normal curve. And we use this bell-shaped curve or normal curve to study a lot of uh, properties of these variables. Equation of normal distribution. You don't have to memorize this formula. Don't be scared. Y equal to E. You learn about E in algebra class. Pi in algebra class. So Y is equal to E to the power of opposite of X minus mu square divided by two sigma square. The whole thing divided by sigma over rad 2 pi. Again, I'm just going to give you the formula. E is approximately 2.718. Look at your algebra book. Pi is 3.14 approximately. Mu is population mean. Uh, sigma is population and standard deviation. X is variable. X is normally distributed variable. X is a continuous variable, continuous variable. That's the same as normally distributed variable, continuous variable. There are some properties. Each variable X has its own normal curve, which the curve depends on the mean 
and a standard deviation depends on the mu and sigma. Uh, what does the mean tell you? The mean, mu, uh, gives you the center of the bell curve. Okay, mu gives you the center of the bell curve. So the mean of the distribution determines the location of the center of the graph. How about the standard deviation? The standard deviation uh, gives you the height of the curve height of the curve. If, uh, when the standard deviation is large number, it means that the data value are further away from the mean. So the curve gets shorter. If uh, the standard deviation is a small number, it means that the data value are close to the center. So the curve gets taller, okay? So when the standard deviation is large, the curve gets shorter and wider. When the standard deviation is small, the curve gets narrower and <clears throat> narrower and taller. Here is an example of two curves. Uh, they both have the same mu, uh, the same center but one is uh, taller than the other one. Uh, the darker curve, the burgundy curve has smaller standard deviation than the blue curve. Smaller standard deviation, the curve get taller. Smaller standard deviation, the curve, curve shorter. So sigma one, which is the standard deviation for um, blue curve is larger than sigma 2. Here these two curves have the same standard deviation because the height is the same but the centers are different so mu is different. Um, these two curves have different centers so mu's are different. Uh, the curve on the right side is taller than the curve on the left so uh, when it is taller uh, the standard deviation is smaller. When the curve is shorter the standard deviation is larger. So sigma one is larger than sigma two. Again, you had to read this section also in last week. So I'm going quickly over that. The normal distribution curve is bell-shaped. Okay, that's what we know. The mean, median, mode are all three are located in the center. It has one single mode. The curve is symmetric with respect to the mean. If you draw a line from the middle, which is the mean, the area on the right side is exactly the same as the area on the left side under the curve. There is no hole, nothing sharp corner jump on the curve. The curve never touches the x-axis. The total area under the curve is one. Uh, you have seen this before, uh, the second bullet in chapter three, the area on the normal uh, curve that lies between one standard deviation of the mean is 68%, two standard deviation of the mean 95%, three standard deviation of the mean 99.7%. We call this empirical rule in chapter three, section three, I think. And this was the curve we studied in 3.3. And you had tests on that. Okay. We call the X uh, normally distributed variable. Now, since X has its own mean and a standard deviation, Working with it is very difficult. So what the statistician do is they work with another variable. It's called standard normal distribution variable. And that variable is called Z. So 
the standard, let me go back to the previous slide, sorry. So X has its own mu and its own sigma. To make the life easier, instead of working with standard distributed variable X, sorry, instead of working with normally distributed variable X, we're going to work with standard normal distributed variable. Okay? Standard. The standard normal distribution is a normal distribution where mu is zero, sigma is one. Okay? So normal distribution has its own mu, its own sigma, but standard normal distribution has a mu of zero, sigma of one. Uh, the formula for the curve of standard normal distribution is E equal to the power of negative Z squared over two divided by rad two pi. Mu was zero, sigma was one. I plug it back in the other formula, I end up with this formula. Again, you don't have to memorize the formula. Now, Z is the standard normal variable. So X is the regular normal variable, Z is the standard normal variable, okay? We always start with variable X, in the word problem, which we will look at it in next section, we start with variable X. We change our variable X to the variable Z. Because Z has a mu of zero, sigma of one. And we're going to use this formula to go from X to Z. Z equal to X minus mu over sigma. You have seen this formula before, Z score formula. Uh, this formula will be discussed in the next section. Now, uh, when I would, when we talk about empirical rule, when we went from the center one standard deviation to the right and left, the area was sixty-eight percent. Then we look at ninety-five uh, percent area when we went to a standard deviation to the right and left, when we went three standard deviation to the right and left, it was 99.7. What happens if uh, we go any amount from the center to the right and left, not just one, two, three standard deviation? So what do we do? How do we find the area under the curve? You have to use your uh, calculator, TI-84 or 83. To find the area under a standard normal distribution curve, under, let me say, Z curve. When I see the word standard normal, I call it Z curve. You're going to go to the distribution where I show you. Second words gives you distribution. But this time, in a sort of choosing binomial CDF, you have to pick normal CDF. And that's item number two. Then you have to give two numbers to normal CDF. For a binomial PDF, you had to give N, P, and X. But here, you have to give the lower Z-score and upper Z-score. If the upper Z score is infinity, you enter E99. If the lower Z score is negative infinity, you enter negative E99. And uh, uh, I will show you in a minute where the E is. Okay, for E, you have to press second double E to get the E. Okay. So 
let me show where it is. Actually, let me start with the example, then I show you. Find the area under the standard normal distribution curve. You want to find the area under Z curve, standard normal distribution. Abbreviation is Z curve. Between Z equal to zero and Z equal to 1.97. You have to draw your curve for each problem. In this Professor, section. if you mean to show your slides, they're not showing. Oh, okay. 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 Now we can see it. Okay. Thank you. So we. Uh, it's going to be that way by cafeteria. Yeah. Can you mute yourself. So if you go over here, Caitlin, mute yourself, please. Yeah. Caitlin. Hold on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, we want to find the area uh, under the Z curve between Z equal to zero and Z equal to 1.97. Here, I draw a bell curve. Um, draw a horizontal line, your x-axis. Exactly in the middle is uh, the center, z equal to zero. When I go to the right, I get 1.97. Just uh, find 1.97 somewhere here. Yeah, this is z equal to one, z equal to two, 1.97. I want to find the area between zero and 1.97. So I shade that region, okay? You want to find the area of this shaded region. So uh, the area of this normal, standard normal distribution curve, to find the area, you use normal CDA. Lower Z score, lower Z, and upper Z. I'm going to show you where it is. Uh, lower Z is the Z on the left side. So zero, comma, upper Z is the Z on the right side, 1.97. Your answer would be 0.4756. Let me show you with the calculator. Okay. Um, you go to distribution where you went and find binomial PDF. Second distribution, normal CDF. not PDF, normal CDF, item number two. It says lower Z score, my lower Z score, my lower Z was zero. When you go to this window, um, sometimes uh, if you have an 83 or old version of 84, it gives you normal CDF, then opens parentheses. Then you put zero comma 1.97. But generically, when you go to this window, lower lower is always negative infinity, negative one in 99, which is negative infinity. So I'm entering zero. My upper was 1.97. Uh, Z has a mu of zero sigma of one. So do not change this, leave them alone because we are looking at Z curve. Highlight the pace, press enter twice. Lower Z score, zero. Upper Z score, 1.97. Mu for Z is zero. Sigma for Z is one. These two are generally given. If you have 83, you don't have to put zero. And I think, you no, you don't have to put zero. And Not one. on some of them. It depends on what she shows. Okay. But as I put in the chat, zero and one are the defaults. Yes. So if you don't have a calculator that asks for all four, sometimes you'll only see the two. The other thing is make sure that when you're using the negatives, that you use the toggle minus and not the subtraction sign. 
Okay, I will get to that in a minute, John. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here it is. We want to find the area between z equal to zero and z equal to negative 0.48. So I always graph this. I draw my z curve. Zero is exactly in the middle. And negative 0.4, somewhere between negative one and zero. Here it is. Draw the line, shade the region. So we're going to use the formula. Area under bell curve is normal curve area, normal CDF, lower z and upper z. Lower z is negative, the z on the left side is negative 0.48. Upper z, the z on the right. Okay. So let's stop here, calculator. Okay. So we go to distribution. We pick a normal CDF item number two. Now, lower Z was negative 0 0.48, Shana. Shana. Yes, ma'am. Negative 0.48. Yes. This is the negative sign. That's what Shana was saying. This is the negative sign. Negative 0.48. Do not use minus sign because if you use minus sign, you get an error message. This is negative sign. That's minus, negative 0.48, upper was zero. Zero, mm -hmm. Mu and sigma are one. And zero, zero one. one. Mm -hmm. Highlight paste, press enter twice, you get 0 0.1844. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we want to find the area under normal distribution curve to the right of z equal to 1.09. Graph. Okay, that's my bell curve. That's 1, 1 1.09. To the right, I shade everything to the right of this line, 1.09. So it goes all the way to the positive infinity. All the way to the right, positive infinity. Positive infinity, we call it E99. Okay, so area, normal CDF or lower Z, upper Z. Lower is the left side of the graph, 1.09. The right side is E99. So let me show you where the E99 is. You have to give me the numbers, Shana. Norm let me go to mm. distribution. Normal CDF. Okay, up. 1.09. 1.09. Okay. You have to find double E. Do you see where comma is? The key with the comma above it is double E. So you get second comma gives you one E. That's fine. Don't do it twice. One E. Then you put 99. So double E is above the comma key. So second comma gives you one E, then you put 99. Go down, highlight the pace, press enter twice. So you get 0.1379. So the area under this curve, the maximum, if the whole thing is shaded, the area is one. But if part of the curve is shaded, the, your answer has to be less than one, a decimal number. Area between negative 0.87 and a point, uh, negative 0.21. Mm -hmm. In, this is my graph. And negative 0.21 is closer to the uh, center, that solid black line center, zero. Mm -hmm. Then negative 0.87 is further. Okay. So you want to shade, uh, find the area of this green region. So normal CDF of lower Z. Lower Z is the one on the left. You put negative 0.87. Upper Z, you put 
the one on the right, negative 0.21. I'm going to show you one more time uh, the calculator. Then I just uh, not going to show the calculator because I don't want to go back and forth. You have to give me the numbers, Shana. Well, sorry. Negative. So Hold on, sorry. Wait, can you wait for a second? Share your calculator screen. Let me clean my, clear my window. Okay. So I, I go to the distribution, normal CDF. Calculate, uh, show your calculator screen. Oh, I am not showing my calculator. There you go. Okay. Negative 0.87. Okay, let me clear. Negative, what is it? 0 0.87. Point eight. Eight. No, 87. 87. 87. Eight eight and negative eight. Point 0.21. Okay. Point two two four seven. Remember, negative sign is this, not minus. This is minus, that's negative. Any questions, Shauna, on the chat? I don't, let me check again, but I'm not seeing any right now. Okay. Not right now, Professor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we want to find the area between z equal to 0.24, z equal to negative 1.12. Okay, negative 1.12 here. 0.24 over here. Remember, the line that I have in the middle is zero, where zero is located. Mean, median, and mode. Okay. So area of this shaded region is normal CDF of lower Z and upper Z. Normal CDF. Normal CDF, the number on the left, you enter that. Then you enter the number on the right. Don't forget to put negative sign Normal CDF of negative 1.12, upper 0.24. You press enter to highlight the pace or press enter twice, you get uh, 0 0.4635. Let me look at one more example, then I give you guys a break. You want to find the area to the left of z equal to 1.31. Graph. 1.31 uh, is on the right side of 0. So this is positive 1, 1.31. This is the line to the left. I shade everything to the left of 1.131. 1.31. The left side of the curve is negative infinity. So area, normal CDF of lower Z and upper Z, normal CDF of negative E99 and 1.31. Okay, let me show you one more time where the infinity is. Um, we go to distribution, normal CDF, negative infinity, negative sign, then second e comma gives you E99. What was the other number, Sean? 1.31. 1.31. 1.31. Okay. So, you enter the number on the left first, then the number on the right. Area is 0 0.9049. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's have a break, five minutes only, because we have a lot to do. Okay. Okay.
Professor, you're muted. I'm not sure if you're aware. But your mic is muted. You want to find the area to the left of z equal to negative 2.15 and to the right of z equal to 1.62. Graph. That's the line for negative 2.15. That's the line for 1.62. To the left of negative 2.15, so shade everything to the left of negative 2.15. Then you go and shade everything to the right of 1.62. Here it is. So what you have to do, you have to use the formula twice to find the area on the left side plus the area on the right side. So on the, we are finding the first formula for area on the left. Normal CDF of negative infinity and negative 2.15 plus area on the right. Normal CDF of 1.62 the number on the left, the number on the right. Okay. Uh, the area on the left, when you go to your calculator, use normal CDF and enter all your information is 0 0.0158. Uh, the area on the right is 0 0.0526. Add them. You have to add the two area. You get 0 0.0684. So here you have to use the formula. There is another way to do this. You find the area of the complement, the white region, then take away that answer from one, you get the same thing back. Okay, any question? I'm not okay. seeing anything in the chat right now. Thank you. Uh, why do we find all these areas? The area under, any curve is the same as probability in a statistics. The area is the probability. So the area under standard normal distribution curve correspond to probability. So area is the probability. Find the probability for the following. Use a standard normal distribution. When we say Z, we are talking about standard normal distribution. Uh, P stands for prob the probability of, how do you read this? Z less than 1.69 greater than uh, zero. So I draw the Z curve. So this is the area under the Z curve. Locate zero, here it is. Locate 1.69 somewhere here. Draw those two lines. Shade the region between the two lines. The area of this green region is the probability between 0 and 1.69. Now, so the area is 0.4545. Now, since I'm asking you to find probability, you have to change your answer to percent. In all the examples that I did in this section, when I ask you to find the per, uh, area, your answer has to be decimal. The area for answer, uh, the answer for the area has to be decimal. The answer for probability after the decimal has to be changed to percent. You want to find probability of Z larger than 2.59. Uh, probability of Z larger than 2.59 is the area under the Z curve again. Locate 2.59, very, very close to 2. Larger than 2.59, so you are shading everything to the right. Here it is. So you want to find the area from 2.59 to positive infinity. So normal CDF of 2.59 and positive infinity E99. So you get point. 0048. You see that since the shaded region is a small, the percent uh, the decimal is a small. They change it to percent, you get 0.48%.
So draw graphs, your Z curve and your lines, left bound, right down, shade the region in between. I have to see your bell curve. Now, sometimes we have to, you have to do the opposite also. I give you the area, you have to give me the Z. So far, I gave you the Z's. I ask you to find the area. Now you have to learn the backward procedure. I give you the area, you have to find the Z. To find the Z, you are not going to use normal CDF function anymore. You go to your distribution. Second, uh, second what? I forgot. You second go to distribution dis inverse norm. In, yeah, you go to distribution. Then you pick item number three, inverse norm. Okay, inverse norm. And then you have to enter only one number. And that's very crucial. You have to enter area from negative infinity to the Z score line. This is for TI 84 plus or TI 83. If you have TI 84 plus CE, which is color, you enter area from negative infinity to the Z score line. Then you pick left tail. You have to choose left tail. Because we have TI-83, we have TI-84+, plus, and some students have TI-84 plus CE. For the CE, you choose option left tail. I will show you where it is. And you know where it is. It's below normal CDF, inverse norm. Okay, find the value that corresponds to the given area. I have given you the area between zero and this Z. I want you to find this, this is Z. I put plus sign because it's a positive Z. The area between zero and that Z is 0 0.4066. Okay. Before I ask you what it is, what is the area under the whole curve? Anyone? One. Correct, one. Thank you. If I look at the Z line, zero line, okay? What is the area from negative infinity to the zero line? Anyone? 0.5. Mm -hmm. 0.5, correct, 0.5. And the same thing, what is the area from zero to positive infinity? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, correct. <laughs> so what is, okay, now you said the area from negative infinity to zero is 0. 0.5. This area, the area of the shaded yellow region is 0. 0.4066, correct? Mm. Yes, ma'am. What is the area of that white region? 0.5 minus that number, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is 0.5 minus, uh, let me use my calculator. 0.5 minus 0.4066. The area of this here nine is 0 0934. 0 0.0934. So try to find the area of all the parts. It's very useful for you. Find the area of all the parts. So 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.5, 0 0.4066, and the other one was, what did I say? 0 0.0934. 0 0.0934, okay? 0 0.0934, okay. But how do you find the Z? Z is inverse norm of area from negative infinity to the Z line. So I need the area from here, negative infinity to that line. 
You have to add up all the areas. We said this from negative infinity to zero is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And the here is 0 0.4066. Uh -huh. Add those two numbers only because I want the area from negative infinity to the that Z line. This is from negative infinity to Z, zero line is 0 0.5. 0 0.5934 when you add. Yes, you add those two numbers, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4066, you get 0 0.9066, okay? Add them up, okay? So let's go to my calculator. So I go to distribution. That's it. Are you seeing, yeah, inverse norm item yeah. number three? Uh-huh. Then I enter point nine zero six six. And then I have the option of left, center, right. I pick left. Because I have uh, TI 84 CE. If you don't have CE, that tail option doesn't come up. 1.3206. And uh, for the Z, I want you to round your answer, please, if you remember, to two decimal places. So we mm. get 1.32. Okay. Question. All of the, just so you guys know, all of the answers on the key are four. For on the, the answer key is for four? This for, section, the Z? for this section, all of the answers are to four decimal places. So use two. And also, we will always use the left tail in this class when we're doing inverse norms. So we're not going to remind you necessarily all the time, but it's always left tail option. Okay, and that has to do with the way the calculator understands how to put numbers in it. Not, not particularly because that's the only way to do it. Okay, let's look at example 12 find the Z value that corresponds to the given area. To find the Z, the formula is Z equal to inverse norm area from negative infinity to the Z line. Okay, let's uh, write, uh, figure out what is the area of all the missing parts. Again, as before, the area from negative infinity to the zero line is 0 0.5. 0 0.5, correct? Uh-huh. What is the area of zero from zero to the positive Z? Well, how do you find it? You, you take away this number from half, 0.5. Because the white region plus the yellow region, the area of the white region, this from zero to Z, the white region plus the yellow is half. So the area from zero to Z is 0.5 minus that minus 0.0239 and I get 0 0.4761 okay can you have that numbers write it down please somewhere yes ma'am thank you so I need the area from negative infinity to this line so this is 0 0.5 uh -huh. plus 0 0.4761 Huh? Gives us 0.9761 for the white region. Yeah. Or, or you can say the area from negative infinity to the Z line is complement of the yellow region, mm -hmm. which is uh, here it is 1 minus 0 0.0239 complement. You will still get the same number, 0.9761. So you have two ways to find the area from negative infinity to the Z line. Add 0 0.5 to uh, 0.4761. You get 0 0.90, 0 0.9761. And Z is going to be 1.98. Z is inverse normal 
Okay. Does everybody have a calculator? Yes. Do you see any no in uh, I don't chat? see anything. Nope. Okay. Good. Next time when you come to class, I want you to bring your calculator because I have to add some program to your calculator. If you don't bring them, I don't add programs, you're doomed, okay? Especially uh, 83, when we get to the two sections from now. Yeah. Bring your calculator to class. I have to add programs to your calculators. Okay, you are uh, done with question. this section. Question? Yeah, what if we are using library calculators? I will add that program to the library calculator. If they want to clear it later on, they can clear that themselves. Okay. It's not going to harm. And if you're, if you're borrowing a cat, it's not on there. They can always, and we can always give it back to you. It's just that you're going to yeah. need it for, um, for the processes that we're doing later. Okay. And if you get different calculator every time uh, during the class time, um, in the, uh, when we get to that lessons, um, if you're using the calculator, um, on your computer, you can write the program yourself, but mm -hmm. okay. the, if you're using the emulator that they downloaded, the emulator on the computer usually has it. Has so it? it? It usually has it in there, except oh, the- not in, And not some of the program that I want them to use. Except the ones that come after, but the, the inverse T is usually there. Yeah, inverse T is always there. So. Okay, let's just start. Um, I know I don't have enough time to. Um, Are you going to do 6-2 or 6-3-1 next? I haven't done 6-2, so I have to do 6-2-6. Six, six. I'm not going to do much because I'm I'm behind one day. Okay. Uh, because your quiz is five one, five two, five three, and six one. One, okay. Okay. There now, is a dedicated video also for six two. So when we go over that, you can also look at that. Okay. Uh, by the way, I don't have time to even do much here today, uh, but Shana, I really strongly want you to come up with videos for six two and six three it's no they are there they're there already six two and six three six two is already there six three i haven't pushed out yet but i i have content okay. for that okay can you do it uh by friday because yeah i as i said i'm really this week I had to cover six two, six three, and six three one, and I haven't done any of them. Yeah. So Let basically, I'm behind three sections. So I strongly recommend that the students do six two and six three by themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by going through my lessons. Yeah. And the and the homework and the videos. Uh, Shauna's uh, YouTube. Yeah. Because six, I try six. to go over them. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't have time even to start anything today. I will go over them very quickly. Maybe look at one example from each section. Maybe mm -hmm. two examples from this section, one example from 6-3. I really do not have any time. That's fine. And Shana, please uh, have a good YouTube material <laughs> for 6-2 and good YouTube material yeah. for 6-3. I will, I'll check right now and make sure, but I, I was checking this morning. Go okay. ahead. And... I don't think I, I have time because the, this list, this class ends when? You have till 2.40, do you not? Oh, 2.40. Okay, so I have time. And it's okay. only three after. Okay, I didn't know. I thought I have till 2.15. <laughs> no, we have 2.40. Okay, we're going to do a lot of applications here. For instance, we can 
answer questions such as, let's say, what percent of individu individual are geniuses, okay? Like what percent of particular brand of light bulb emits between 300 and 400 lumens? So we're gonna answer this type of question. So every problem in this section, as I said, is word problem, okay? And there are always hint in every single problem. There is a statement in every problem. It says variable is normally distributed. Okay. It means that you are dealing with continuous variable X. Okay. You are dealing with continuous variable X. So to solve the problem using standard normal distribution, transform X, continuous variable X, to the variable Z by Z-score formula. Okay. Then you have to find the probability, which we, I show you in the previous section, 6.1. Uh, uh, and also finding Z. So the slide number four and five, I just discussed it two minutes ago. I'm going to jump to example number one. We are looking at application of these bell curves. Most tests that measures one's intelligence quotient, IQ, are designed to have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. It is known that IQs are normally distributed. Do you remember I said every single problem in this chapter has a phrase variable normally distributed? That's why I made it purple, bold. In 1916, Psychologist Louis M. Truman set a guidelines of 140, scaled down to 136 in today's test for potential genius. A, let X measure one's IQ, sketch the distribution of X, okay? B, what is the probability that an individual is potential genius? So we're gonna draw a bell curve for X. I'm gonna show you how. Then we wanna see what is the probability that an individual potential genius. If you have IQ 136 and higher, you have potential, you are potential genius. So we wanna find probability of X greater than or equal 136 or greater than 136. Okay. So we wanna draw a bell curve for X. So what is the definition of X? You have to do it during your homework. X is the measure of one person's IQ. Okay. What is the mean for X? 100. So mu is 100. What is the standard deviation? 15. Sigma is 15. Okay. Uh, to draw, remember, the x is normally distributed. x is normally distributed. I have to draw the bell curve. So from the mean, 100, I go one standard deviation to the right, two standard deviation to the right, three standard deviation to the right. Then I go one standard deviation to the left, two and three standard deviation to the left. Here it is, mu plus one sigma. I'm going from the mu, one standard deviation plus sign means to the right. So 100 plus one times 15, 115. Then you can add, 15 to 115 to get 130, because you are going now to a standard deviation to the right from the mean. Add 15 to 130, you get 145. You are adding standard deviation every time, okay? So this is, a, we went from the mean, one standard deviation to the right, two and three. So 100 plus 15, 115. 115 plus 15, 130. 130 plus 15, 145. 
Now let's go to the left from the mu. 100 minus 15, 85. Then I take away 15 from 85, 70. Take away 15 from 70, 55. Okay. Any question about this slide? No. Okay. So this is mu, 100. That's the highest point on the curve. So I draw a straight line and put a solid dot above that line. Then from the mean, I go one to the right. I write 115, one to the left. I put 115 and 85 to the left, to the left and right of 100. Then I go two to the right. 115, you go 130. Then two to the left, 70. Three to the right, 145. Three to the left, 55. Okay. And every every time I find the location, I draw a straight line, put a dot. Straight line, put a dot. Straight line, put a dot. Straight line, put a dot above it. And same thing with the three to the right and left. Then I draw a smooth curve through these dots. And the curve is going to be bell-shaped. I don't know exactly what is the height of these lines, but the highest, the highest height is above or is above mu. Then the heights are getting the smaller and smaller. They have the same height. One standard deviation to the right and left have same height. Two to the right and left, same height. Three to the right and left, same height. That's the graph for Z. X curve, your continuous variable, measure of one person's IQ. Okay, part B, what is the probability that an individual is potential genius? Uh, the problem says if you have an IQ of 136 or higher, you are potential genius. So we are finding probability of X greater than or equal 136. <clears throat> In the previous section, I show you how to find the probability of Z, not X, Z. So you change every X to Z by the Z score formula. This is probability. So this is the previous curve that I show you. I locate 136, here is 130, 145, this is 136. I wanna find the area to the right of that 136, so yellow shaded region. So the left bound is 136, the right bound is positive infinity. Okay, I'm gonna go from probability of X to probability of Z. So Z equal to X minus mu over sigma. Your x is 136 minus mu 100 over 15. I'll put uh, the difference in the numerator inside parentheses. Enter the whole thing with the parentheses around the numerator in the calculation. You get 2.40. You can round your answer to four decimal places. That's fine with me. Okay. So... A probability of x greater than or equal to 136 is the same as a probability of z greater than or equal to 2.40. They're the same. I'm going to draw my z curve now. This is the area of the shaded region. This is my z curve. Zero is in the middle. Okay, look at the x curve. This is the x curve. In the center, mu is 100. Do you remember I said every x has its own mu, in this case 100, and a standard deviation, in this case 15? But z curve always have mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. So, so I draw the z curve, put the 0 in the middle, locate 2.40, and I want to find the 
probability of z larger than 2.40. So I shade to the right. So the area of both yellow shaded region are exactly the same. This is x curve. This is z curve. Okay, those two area, the value has to be exactly the same. So you go to normal CDF for the Z curve. You put the left bound, 2.4 Z, the right bound, positive infinity E99. You get 0 0.0082, change it to percent, 0.82 percent. So the probability that an individual is potential genius or have a... Uh, IQ larger than or equal to 136 is only 0.82%. Uh, Question. So you always start off with finding probability of X, then you change that to probability of Z. You go from X curve to the Z curve. Okay, next example, if you don't have any question on number one. The average age of CEOs is 56 years. Assume variable is normally distributed. Look, I want you in this chapter, learn to highlight the key informations. Because as I said, every you're gonna have word problems constantly. And you will see that in every PowerPoint, I have bolded the key phrases, highlight them different colors, do it. Like I always highlight normally distributed. That is giving me a hint. Oh, you have to use normal CDF, normal CDF. Okay. So the average age of CEO is 56 years. Variable is normally distributed. Standard deviation, four years. Find the probability that the age of one randomly selected CEO will be in the following range. A, between 53 and 59 years old. B, between 58 and 63 years old. Okay. In this section, I'm, we are finding probability related to one person or one item one person or one item. Because in the next section, we're gonna look at probability related to more than one person, okay? So then the Z formula will be different. What X is the age of one CEO, one CEO. X is normally distributed. What is the mean for X? 56. What is the standard deviation for? Okay. I didn't ask you to graph uh, the X curve this time because I did it in one example. You have an example to follow if they ask you to graph. Okay. Part A, we want to find probability that the age of CEO is, what is the probability the age of CEO is between 53 and 59? I put the X in the middle, probability P, open parenthesis, put my variable in the middle. I put two less than sign, smaller number goes on the left, larger number goes on the right. You read it as probability of X less than 59 and X larger than 53. Shauna, when we have five minutes to stop, please tell me. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have to change probability of X between these two numbers to probability of Z between two other numbers. So I have to find Z for every X. Okay. What is Z for 53? X is 53 minus mu 56 over 4. I put the subtraction in the numerator inside parentheses, 
enter the whole thing at the same time in the calculator. I get negative 0.75. What is the Z for 59? Here it is. Z equal to 59 minus 56 over sigma 4. I'm copying these numbers here. X, 59. Don't forget parentheses in the numerator. You get positive 0.75. So, Probability of X between 53 and 59 is the same as probability of Z between negative 0.75 and positive 0.75. So you need the area, probability is the area between these two numbers in the, on the Z curve. Here it is. My Z curve, zero in the middle, negative 0.75, positive 0.75, the shade, the area, Probability is the area. So you go, when you write normally distributed, you know that you have to use normal CDF. Left bound, negative 0.75. Right bound, positive 0.75. You go to your distribution, pick item number two. Here is the percentage, uh, sorry, the decimal, and that's the percentage. Question? Okay, a B, probability of X between 58 and 63 years. What is the probability that age of one CEO is between 58 and 63? I, I have to find the Z for each X. Z for 50, X equal to 58 is 0.50. Z for X equal to 63 is 1.75. So uh, probability of X between 58 and 63 is the same as probability of Z between 0.5 and 1.75. Draw your Z curve, here it is. 0.5 on the left, 1.75 on the right. Shade the region between the two. You need the area between the two. You use normal CDF. So the probability that, that the age of one CEO is between 58 and 63 is 26.85%. Question? Okay, I'm not gonna go over um, example number three. Example number three is similar to one example one and two. Any question about examples one and two? Not okay. seeing anything here. Okay, thank you, John. Now, we're going to do opposite examples. Like, I give you the probability, you have to give me the Z and then X. Okay, you have to give me the Z, the value for the Z, which leads to finding the variable for the X. And we're going to use inverse norm. Sorry, I went to. Okay, weight weights of one year old boys are approximately normally distributed, with a mean of twenty two point eight pounds and a standard deviation of about two point fifteen pounds. What weight does a one-year-old boy need to have so that only 5% of one-year-old boys weigh more than he does? B, what is the weight for a one-year-old boy so that he is on the 85th percentile?
Okay. You have the problem up here. Let's define our variable x. Sorry. X is the weight of one one-year-old boy. X is normally distributed. Mu is 22.8 pounds. Sigma, 2.15. Standard deviation, sigma. Okay. Part A. What weight does a one-year-old boy need to have so that only 5% of one-year-old boys weigh more than he does? Step one for A. Okay. We have to find the Z related to the X using inverse norm. Okay. When you are finding the X or going through opposite process of finding probability, there are two steps. So first we have to find the Z, then we find the X. Okay. You have to graph here again. Z equal to inverse norm, area from negative infinity to the Z line score. Okay. When I say, what is the weight of a one-year-old boy so that only 5% of one-year-old boy weigh more than he does? So it means that the area of the right tail is 5%. Only 5% weigh more than he does. The rest weigh less than he does. So this is the weight of that one-year-old boy. Only 5% weigh more than him. So the area to the right of X is 5%, 0.05. I have to find this X. What percent of the boy weigh less than he does? 95%. 1 minus 5%, 95%. Okay. So I have to find the Z first, then find the X. To us, the first, we must find the Z related to the X using inverse norm. So, so Z equal to inverse norm, area from negative infinity to the Z line. If only 5% weigh more than he does, 95% weigh less than he does. So Z equal to inverse norm of 0.95. So area from negative infinity to the Z line is 95, 0.95. So Z is 1.64. Any question? Okay. Now we find the Z using inverse norm. Now I'm going to find the X using Z score. So we use we use inverse norm to find the Z. We use Z score formula to find the X. We must find the X using Z score formula. So Z equal to X minus mu over sigma. Z was 1.64 from the previous slide, equal X is unknown, minus mu is 22.8, sigma 215. So what I do next is I put one under 1.64, this is some algebra work. I put one under 1.64 and I cross multiply. So x minus 22.8 times 1 is x minus 22.8. Then I multiply 1.64 with 215. So put 1 under 1.64 plus multiply. Then you get x minus 22.8 equal to the product of 1.64 and 215 is 3.526. 
Then to isolate X, I add 22.8. So X is 22.8 plus 3.526. So X is 26.326 pounds. So uh, that one year old boy, if his weight is approximately 26.3 pounds, then only 5% of the boys weigh more than he does. 95% weigh less than he does. Question? Now part B. What is the weight of a one-year-old boy so that he is on the 85th percentile? Okay, if you are on the 85th percentile, it means that 85% of the boy weigh less than do you, only 15% weigh more than you. If you are on the 85th percentile, 85% 85 of the kids weight weigh less than you, they weigh, their weight is less than you, only 15%. How do I get 15%? 100% minus 85%. 15% way more than you. So if you are located on the 85th percentile, means 85% of the kids way less than you. Only 15% way more than you. 1 minus 0.85. So we have to find the x. x is inverse norm area from negative infinity to z squared. So you put inside this parenthesis, you put 0.85. So inverse norm of 0.85 is 1.04. Now we have to find um, the X. You, we use the score formula. Z was a 1.04. X is unknown. Mu 22.8, sigma 2.15. Put one under the Z. Cross multiply. X minus 22.8 is 2.236. And take negative 22.8 and then put them on the other side. When it crosses the equal sign, the negative becomes positive. So if a one-year-old boy weigh 25.036 pounds, he is on the 85th percentile. These are, we are talking about one-year-old boys. Any question about uh, example four? Okay. I'm going to skip number five is similar to number example five is similar to number four. I'm going to look at um, example six. If the average price of a new home is 245,500, find the maximum price, maximum and minimum prices of the house a contractor will build to include the middle 90% of the market. Assume the standard deviation is $1,900, $1,900, and the variable is normally distributed. Five minutes, Professor. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So... X is the price of one new home. X is normally distributed. 
we are, we are looking for two prices, minimum price X1, maximum price X2. Mu is two for, uh, 245,500, sigma, sigma 1900 dollar. Okay. We are looking for the, uh, sorry. Middle 90. Minimum price X1 and a maximum price X2 were, uh, here it is, if it includes the middle 90%, middle 90% of the market. So from mu, which is exactly in the middle, if I divide 90% by two, I get 45%, correct? So from mu, I go 45% to the right, 45% to the left. The sum is 0. 0.90, okay? So from the mu, if I draw a line here, the area to the right of mu till X2 line is 0. 0.45%. And the same thing, from the mu to the X1 line, 45%. What is the area of this white region, the little region? Since I have 45% from here to here, that should be 5%. That should be 5%. So, or 0 0.90 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 is gonna be one, okay? Now I'm just going to find uh, one of the prices. Prices. So we find Z1 and Z2 first, then using um, Z score uh, using inverse norm. So Z1, Z1 is the area from negative infinity to X1, to Z1 or X1 line, and that's uh, 0.05. So Z1 is a negative 1.64. So Z1 is the area from negative infinity to Z1, and that's 0.05. Inverse normal 0.05 is negative 1.64. Z2 is the area from negative infinity to Z2. So I have 0.05 and 0.90 if I add these two, because I have to go from negative infinity to Z2. So 0.05 plus 0.90. Inverse norm of 0.95, you get positive 1.64. So I found my Z1 and Z2. Now I do the same thing as I did before to find X1 and X2. Finding using um, uh, Z-score. Z1 is equal to X1 minus mu over sigma negative 1.64 equal to x1 minus 245500 over 1900 put one under this cross multiply multiply put take this to the other side so your lower price is 242384 you repeat this process for Z2. Here it is. So uh, the higher price is $248,616. So the only difference between this and uh, example four was uh, here, you have to find two Zs and two X. We are talking about, let's say, middle 90%. So from this line, you go 45% to the right, the left over 5%. Then from the mu line, you go 45% to the left, the left over is 5% also. So 0 0.05, the whole thing 90 and 0 0.05. Find Z1 using inverse norm, find the Xs, using ZS4 formula. Okay. Uh, We're at time, Professor. Yes. So, um, go ahead. I think yeah, I did 6.2, you have material for 6.2, please have material for 6.3, yeah. then 6.31, mm -hmm. um, which I try to catch up. 
I try I'll to push it out. I, I'll push the 6.3 and the 6.31 out by Friday. I have it. Oh, great. I put some extra, I put some extra links in the chat as well. Okay. So be sure that you check the chat. There's, there's a problem that's similar to this using the middle 80 with some different numbers. If you want to practice that, that's there. And also the example about the baby weights, there's a dedicated video on the example that she did there. So you can look at those in the chat. If you have any questions, just drop me a message. Okay. And don't forget your quiz is, uh, it will be, you will have access to it to tonight? on Friday midnight before. Uh, oh, okay. Midnight. Gotcha. So before I go to bed on Thursday, I activate yeah. your quiz four. I think it's quiz four, correct? I believe I don't so. know. It's your quiz on chapter five and six one. Mm -hmm. and then uh, your quiz is due Friday, 11.59 p.m. And the same thing with your homework, Friday, 11.59 p.m. So okay? nothing is due today? Nothing is due today. But nothing if, every, today. if somebody has done all their homework and they gave it to me, that's fine. If they have not come, if it is not complete, it is due Friday night. Yeah, if it's not complete, homework. you can feel free to take it down and resubmit it. The portal will still be open. Yeah, the portal is open. But you cannot find the quiz till Friday. <laughs> morning. <laughs>